Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about extruders and really going through the uh, mental process of how we're going to model extruder performance and really quantify it so that we can kind of plot the different requirements and make sure that we're picking the correct motor, the correct gear ratio, and all those parameters for um, a given extruder or printer. And this takes into account our um, not only our flow, um, but also, you know, are we Bowden or direct drive and those types of things. Um, this will be primarily focused on clipper kinematics because, um, again, clipper is the main thing I'm working on here, um, but similar things can be also used for other, um, you know, Marlin or, or Duet, though I don't have as much information about how those exactly work, so you'd have to update it for those printers. When we look at a problem, we want to make sure that we define what the requirements are. And so for an extruder, I'm really seeing three primary functions. Um, the first one is the most obvious. The extruder needs to provide a force on the filament to push it through the hot end because um, it takes force to build a pressure to squeeze that filament through the small nozzle. Um, and this kind of quantification of uh, force versus flow is actually really difficult because it varies so much with uh, not only filament type, or like say ABS versus PLA, but also different brands, um, different flow geometries of nozzles versus uh, hot ends, different print temperatures. There's so many variables here. Um, I could spend, I'm sure people are spending you know, their careers trying to quantify this and how to improve it. Um, today, I don't really have much information on it. I know there's some uh, research out there that I'll try to pull from, um, but at this time, I don't know of anything. If you do, please let me know because I will be adding this to my model in the future. The second is retraction speed. We know that extruders have to retract. Um, you can generally define a distance and a speed and so the extruder is going to have to um, account for that. Next is pressure advance and this is again pressure advance is Clipper's implementation. There's other implementations for other firmwares but this essentially says that in order to compensate for um, flow, we're going to adjust the extruder position so that the flow out of the nozzle is even and steady, even during accelerations and decelerations. And this is actually what I'm going to focus on mainly today because I think it's the most interesting and potentially the, the most limiting in, in certain situations. So the other thing we're going to look at is what are our key variables? And we're going to use the same stepper motor variables that we've been using for the X and Y motion system. Um, you know, we'll be able to pick from any of those models in that list um, and add more as you need. The next is gear type. And, and this gear type, whether it's the 5mm Bontech, 8mm Bontech, LGX, uh, direct drive, say with a Hemera or something like that, all this is doing is defining that moment arm. So if the, as the diameter is getting larger, um, your moment arm is larger and you, the motor needs more torque um, in order to move the filament with a specific force and specific speed. So um, again, this is all just preference based on the extruder design. Gear ratio, there's a lot of different ones here from uh, BMG's uh, 50 to 17. Uh, the V0.1 toolhead and Sherpa and a few other ones use the 50 to 10 or 50 to 8. Um, the 80 to 20 is common with the Mobius uh, 3 or Mobius 2 or M4 extruders. 7.5 to 1, it would be Galileo or Orbiter. Uh, the 1 to 1 would be, say, a direct drive. And then LGX has those uh, multi kind of gear ratio setups. And I'd I don't know the values off the top of my head, um, but I'll pull those in um, for the final calculator. Next, we really have direct drive versus Bowden. And this is key because um, the pressure advance for a Bowden setup where you have to compensate a lot more is actually a lot higher than with the direct drive where that essentially the springiness of the filament is less of, a, of an issue. And so this is actually really interesting and we'll get to more on this in the future. Printer acceleration and also the max velocity and flow both come into effect where um, Essentially, the faster you change speeds, the faster the extruder has to ramp up. And then also with um, higher flow requires higher uh, force to extrude the filament through at that higher rate. And then with higher flow or higher acceleration, your pressure advance is going to become 
kind of more severe in accounting for that. So um, we've talked about the extruder parameters and the general design. So now let's go to this wonderful slide, which I love. Um, this is essentially a one-on-one -on -one of how we are calculating uh, the information we need because with an extruder, it's not simple like um, measuring tool head acceleration because with the previous model, we were just able to say, my printer runs at a maximum acceleration of 10,000 millimeters per second squared. I know my tool head weighs 500 grams, so we can calculate the torque required to accelerate that. And that torque requirement was constant across the entire range of printer speeds. Well, that's really nice and simple. For an extruder, there's so much more going on here. And um, we'll, let's step through this quick. So assuming we have a tool head acceleration, uh, which is a key parameter in this analysis, so say 10,000 millimeters per second squared, if we integrate that acceleration profile versus time, we can get a tool head velocity. So for instance, what I'm saying here is if we start off at zero and then apply 10,000 millimeters per second squared until we reach 300 millimeters per second, um, that profile can be integrated to a velocity uh, versus time plot. Once we have that velocity versus time plot, we can calculate the flow based on the assumptions of layer height and layer width. So 300 millimeters per second times 0.4 millimeter, millimeter layer width times 0.2 millimeter layer height is a certain filament flow. And that flow is essentially the plastic coming out of the extruder, and that is going to equal the plastic going into the extruder. Since we know the cross-sectional area of the filament going into the extruder, we can calculate our filament velocity going into the extruder. And again, if we integrate velocity, we can get position. And so we do that here to get our filament position. And this essentially um, is what your G code is doing. So your G code says, go extruder, go to position X. And your printer firmware is kind of uh, back calculating with tool head acceleration and filament position to know exactly where it should be at certain points. So now we have filament velocity and filament position. And this is where the fun begins because up until now, things are really kind of basic. But once we add pressure advance to the whole thing, it gets a lot more complicated. So again, while Clipper does this differently, probably the Marlin or say Duet boards, um, for Clipper, pressure advance position is defined as the filament position times the compensation factor, which is defined as pressure advance times filament velocity. So the faster your velocity is, the further ahead, essentially, the PI, uh, the pressure advance position will be from the kind of true normal filament position. So this is great. Uh, the downside with this is that um, this essentially is very discontinuous. Um, there's a lot of changes really fast. And so the acceleration, if you just put in this pressure advance position directly into your extruder, um, would be so high that your extruder would probably skip because your acceleration is just like, you know, 60,000 or 100,000 uh, millimeters per second squared, um, which is way too fast. So what Clipper has is they have essentially this smooth PA, uh, which is an integral um, from uh, before and after the current time period. So for instance, um, with the typical smooth parameter smoothing time of 40 uh, milliseconds, Essentially, it looks at the time 20 milliseconds in the past through 20 milliseconds in the future, and it integrates this pressure advance position and then does some math to smooth it out. So essentially, you get this nice continuous curve um, that allows you to still get the same kind of effects as pressure advance, but allows your extruder to actually keep up. So this is what's actually sent to your extruder itself. So again, where we integrated um, to go from acceleration to velocity and then velocity to position, we're going to differentiate this position function to get velocity and again, differentiate it to get acceleration. So now we have all of our extruder parameters defined. And then we can use the rotation distance of those different 5 millimeter, 8 millimeter bond type gears. We can use the gear ratio or um, of the, you know, different gears between that uh, tooth gear and the stepper motor. And then we can get our extruder motor angular acceleration. 
and then our rotational speed. And these are the really cool parameters that we need. So angular acceleration times your rotor, rotor inertia gives you the required torque of your stepper motor to just, you know, reach this speed, ignoring all the other uh, parameters like filament for, uh, flow uh, or filament force versus flow. And then rotational speed, again, is another value that this is plotted against. So if we think about this as the y parameter and then this is the x parameter, we can plot the regime at which an extruder is operating at, um, you know, at certain printer accelerations and filament flow conditions. So this can allows us to define all the operating points. And this is really important, again, because extruders are not a single flat uh, torque requirement across all speeds. It actually varies quite significantly. And it varies a lot depending on your pressure advance parameters and your smooth uh, pressure advance position uh, parameters as well. So now that we have all this, let's jump over to kind of the initial version of the calculator to talk through it some more. So what we're looking at today is just this basic move. The tool head is stopped. It starts accelerating. It reaches a, a high speed. It stays there for a minute and then decelerates back to zero. During this, the extruder is extruding. Um, the peak of this velocity ends up being roughly 30 cubic millimeters per second. So now let's jump over and see what the uh, extruder is seeing during this time. When we get to extruder velocity, you'll see that the general shape is almost identical. There's not all that much going on. It goes uh, from zero up to a fixed value, maintains that fixed value and drops back to zero. Integrating this, which is taking the area under this curve, we get position, which is essentially um, just no extrusion. And then once the tool head starts ramping up, we uh, increase the slope until it reaches a fixed value. And then it tapers off back to a flat value uh, once we reach the point where the tool head stops. There's not a lot really going on here. And again, that's because this is just the um, raw extruder position without any pressure advance. Let's take a quick jump back to this chart because I think it's best to reorient where we are. We jumped in here at tool head velocity, uh, which took into account our tool head acceleration. Uh, we calculated the filament velocity directly from that, and then we integrated to get filament position. So now we have both of these uh, values here. So now we can calculate the pressure advance position, and I'll also show you, show you a chart of the pressure advance velocity. So again, pressure advance uh, position is the same as the extruder position plus the velocity times the pressure advance parameter. And what that ends up looking like is this. Um, as the velocity increases, the offset between the extruder position, um, that is kind of the raw extruder position, to the pressure advance position increases until it reaches a fixed value. Because essentially at this point, um, this value is fixed and because the velocity is fixed. And that continues on until we reach the point where the tool head starts decelerating and the extruder starts decelerating. And at that point, our extruder position uh, matches our raw uh, pressure advance position. Jumping over to uh, the extruder velocity, uh, you'll see that this is actually where things start to get a little bit tricky because um, this slope here is really steep. And what this means is that um, at this point, the extruder is almost going no speed. And then this next time step, we're going very fast. And so what that means is the tool head has to accelerate incredibly fast in order to reach this new pressure advance parameter. And there's two concerns here. The first one is, um, can the extruder motor actually accelerate fast enough in order to reach that new speed? And then the second one is like, is there going to be any issues with the extruder itself with, you know, shredding filament or any other type of thing because you're changing uh, speeds so fast, the system doesn't really have time to respond. And here's really where we start seeing the issue with this. If you note the uh, orange lines down here is basically the acceleration that would normally be required without pressure advance. And then you see these enormous spikes um, with the gray lines where the kind of raw unsmooth pressure adva advance values are just extremely high. And depending on the gear ratio and rotor mass and all that type of stuff, 
um, you know, what the extruder is actually seeing could be incredibly high. And if it's too high, then essentially your extruder is going to skip and you're not going to get good results. So going back to our flow chart, now that we have all of these raw pressure advance positions, we can calculate what the smooth pressure advance uh, corresponding position is. And that is this blue line here. You see it follows the gray line, um, but kind of takes off those corners. And the shape of this blue line is really determined by one parameter, which is the smoothing time for the pressure advance. What it essentially does is it looks at the smoothing time uh, centered across, so if we were looking at the pressure advance time for 0.05 seconds, we'd look at the smoothing time um, divided by two before the time we're looking at and after, um, and it would average out this uh, raw pressure advance position and do some functions on it in order to meet this value. Um, and all this calculation will be in the spreadsheet. Um, it's relatively intensive to process, but you know, it's not a big deal. Um, what this does to velocity is you'll see that instead of um, having these sharp spikes, you have a much more gradual velocity curve throughout the, the area. Um, and then also with acceleration, instead of these huge spikes that are impossible to meet um, in some situations, we have these much uh, still larger than the nominal acceleration, um, but much more reasonable values. So now that we've done all that math, here's where we really get to the exciting part. Um, this is the filament acceleration versus velocity. Um, so you'll see at the beginning, it is starting at zero acceleration and zero velocity when the tool head is stationary. And then um, it accelerates um, the filament and the uh, velocity increases. And then it starts slowing back down. And then we come back to steady state right here, which is um, the kind of flat part of the velocity curve. And you'll see this 12.6 is basically equal and to this right here, where we're at this steady state condition. Um, and in this condition, there is no uh, acceleration. It's just reading it, reaching a constant velocity. Um, when we come back here though, we're slowing back down and we go back to zero. So anytime that the printer accelerates to maximum velocity, it's gonna make this curve and then it decelerates, it's gonna make this curve. And this shape, it um, will change um, kind of um, the size and, and everything like that, depending on where your starting and ending moves are. Um, but we can convert these filament accelerations into extruder stepper motor angular accelerations and also torque values, and then the velocities into a um, rotations per second or RPM of the extruder motor, um, and then we can plot these versus the torque um, kind of plots of the motors. And this is where things become really exciting because from a pressure advance standpoint, we can really understand how these overlay. And uh, one of the things I've found is that um, looking at a very uh, long Bowden extruder with a high gear ratio, such as the Mobius, um, if you're using a pressure advance of one, um, this uh, extruder acceleration versus velocity um, basically is so large and the velocities are so high that the extruder motor cannot reach it. Um, the torque required is too high. And so you need to increase the smoothing time in order to bring those um, kind of max peaks of velocity and acceleration down. So uh, I'm really excited to see where all this ends up going. Um, again, there's more work to be done here and, um, you know, a lot of cleanup in order to make it, you know, easy to visualize and see what different uh, conditions, um, especially since for every um, stepper motor, there is a different torque required curve because, um, you know, instead of the flat line that we had before with uh, torque required for the system, now this entire plot uh, changes and, and it's difficult to really offset the torque for the stepper motor uh, based on this variable function like this. So um, that is pretty much it for today. Um, I will be looking at continuing this in the future. I'm not sure if it'll be next weekend or um, again on the following uh, weekend or something like that, but um, I just wanted to share this with you guys because it was the first time I'd really understood the Clipper Pressure Advanced Kinematics and um, just wanted to help demystify some of that. So um, hope you all have a good one. Have a great week. Bye.